Welcome to the Central Florida Gardening Show. Right, welcome back to the Central Florida Gardening Show. We're taking a, about a two month hiatus, and uh, in that time we've been learning permaculture techniques. We've attended a couple permaculture conferences, and uh, so we're ready to share some information that will hopefully get you growing and also thinking about sustainability. Here's my partner here. What have we been doing to this pigeon pea tree? Why don't we cut it? That's right. So sometimes, here's a pigeon pea tree we planted about seven or eight months ago. And this tree got, these trees live for four or five years, produce a great bean, makes little peas inside. And um, plants like this are great at fixing atmospheric nitrogen. So this makes really good green manure. And I've learned these things from attending permaculture events, uh, particularly one in November of 2012, a couple months ago, at the Organic Sanctuary right here in, um, right here in Florida. And uh, Natalie Keencrops and Jonathan Winfrey run the Organic Sanctuary. They're a certified, also uh, they sell certified seeds, all organic and heirlooms and great, great people. And so they've taught me some techniques and this is one of the things they grow on their, on their land is pigeon pea. Um, number one, it fixes atmospheric nitrogen. Uh, two, they grow very fast. Um, and three, it produces a great edible food in the form of the peas. And I can show you, I'll show you some of those pods. In fact, I have a bucket of them that we've picked. Go. All right, so let me show you some of these pigeon peas. Pigeon peas uh, come from this tree, pigeon pea tree, sometimes called the Congo pea tree. And they have little bitty peas inside the pods. And this is actually also used to make the Indian dish dal. Uh, sometimes dal is substituted with um, other things now like lentils and things but in India dal is often prepared with uh, pigeon pigeon peas like this so you take the dried beans and uh, what you need to do is soak these though the way they prepare them and then you take the green bean out of the the seed coat because that seed coat has a sort of a an undigestible uh, kind of a glucose coating on it that isn't real friendly to our digestive tract so you just soak them and take the pea out and then it makes a, and then they uh, used to make a, like uh, dishes like doll. Yeah, there's a young pea. Let me see the young pea. Here, Julia, you want to show them your bucket of pigeon peas? These are young pigeon peas. We're going to try to eat these, make uh, stir fries and things with them. And so here's a young one right there. You can squeeze that open. There's the actual pea that comes out of the seed coat. And that's what's used to make the dishes. That way you don't have the undigestible sea coat on it. All right, so here's our pruned pigeon pea tree. Uh, another reason, of course, I had to prune this because it was just getting too big and it was starting to lean over and it was just getting too heavy. Can I show them the hibiscus? Yeah, you can show them the hibiscus. Julie wants to show the cranberry hibiscus, something else that we picked up at the organic sanctuary. This is a great crop also. But we need to stay focused. Yeah, you can eat that. We gotta stay focused on the pigeon pea. So we uh, we pruned. We you can tell we pruned this yesterday. And what we did is we've taken it to the backyard, and we'll show you. We're chopping it up now to make the green manure. Uh, we like we're saying the the atmospheric nitrogen that gets fixed in things like pigeon pea. Well, that makes those plants also very rich in nitrogen. So. Uh, when you prune something like this, that makes excellent mulch for your compost barrel. So let's go take a look. All right, so here's our pruned pigeon pea tree. Uh, another reason, of course, I had to prune this because it was just getting too big and it was starting to lean over and it was just getting too heavy. Can I show them the hibiscus? Yeah, you can show them the hibiscus. Julie wants to show the cranberry hibiscus, something else that we picked up at the organic sanctuary. This is a great crop also, but we need to stay focused. Yeah, you can eat that. We gotta stay focused on the pigeon pea. So we, uh, we pruned, we, you can tell we pruned this yesterday and what we did is we've taken it to the backyard 
and we'll show you we're chopping it up now to make the green manure uh, we'd like we we're saying the the atmospheric nitrogen that gets fixed in things like pigeon pea well that makes those plants also very rich in nitrogen so uh, when you prune something like this that makes excellent mulch for your compost barrel so let's go take a look right, so here we are here is some of the pigeon pea that we pruned and so this is being chopped now with my shovel learned this technique from Jonathan Winfrey at the Organic Sanctuary chop this up now and you then you can add this to your you can make mulch with it you can add it to your compost barrel here's our compost barrel here and I keep this I put all of organic matter in there as much as possible all kinds of Daddy. things eggs and can stuff that we don't eat it? and then that ends up going back into the earth Daddy, after a little while it becomes a nice black soil yeah and Julia's helping me do some do the chopping show me how you cut it exactly so you gotta chop this stuff up huh and that's how to do it that is how to grow something that's gonna be high in nitrogen and then use that put that back into the earth in a way that's going to be you know help sustain what you're doing it also lowers your fertilizer costs it's a big part of what we do you know we try to reduce the costs of things so we're not always spending money on soil amendments and fertilizers we do whatever we can to be as sustainable as possible so um, I want you to stay tuned because right after this right after this segment here you're gonna get a chance to see Jonathan Winfrey and Natalie King crops and uh, a great homesteading workshop that I was able to capture some video from and share with you um, thanks to some permissions from uh, the organizers of the homesteading workshop at the Organic Sanctuary in November of 2012 and you'll get a chance to learn a lot more than just what I'm showing here because um, uh, the Organic Sanctuary has spent a long time really uh, working with the land and learning true permaculture techniques and so stay tuned hi i'm natalie i'm jonathan and i'm terry and we're here with Homesteading Workshop Orlando today. We're going to be going over organic gardening, solar renewable energy, and farm animal care. We're very excited. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoy the day. Get in the soil, and you just, it's, the main purpose is to loosen the soil and to aerate the soil. Save your hands uh, from everything. I mean, sometimes I don't use gloves. But whenever you're working in the in the soil and with the weeds, with the, you know, just the gloves, faster, more efficient work. But for mulch, such as we use, we use both straw and na natural native cut wood that they just go and they cut for development. We'll get all that untreated. That's the key with mulch. Untreated, naturally cut um, wood source. We have some chicken bitties, which is a young chicken, and they actually free roam right now in their life, uh, their the phase of life. This we're letting them free roam in the garden. Not only does that reduce our pests, but it uh, reduces feed costs. The whole garden is mulch, and I mentioned the mulch. What kind we use now? Why? Why do we mulch? Mulching is the number one way that we keep the moisture levels in the soil. The idea is to use both the floor space and the vertical natural space. pest deterrent method. Basil has natural pest deterrent properties. That roof and that irrigation line comes out right here. So if you just want to water a couple things, there's 250 gallons of rainwater right here. So that was just a simple re using recycled drums, just laying around. So everything's 
done in zones. Zone one would be anything right around your house. Zone zero is pretty much. The way I recommend doing that is container gardening. If you can do all your lettuces right here and put them right on your front porch, you have everything you need to make your own salads. If you uh, put your basils right there, you've got your pestos. So you can do most of your meals right there on your front porch with container gardening. Traditional monocrop farming strategy. You're looking at pretty much the same space being used. But here, two, four, six, you got like nine plants versus a lot more than nine plants. So you're maximizing space, minimizing weeding, and uh, so you, whenever we plant our containers, we want to keep a heavy, uh, a heavy space. Our seed plants out there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how we harvest the seeds, how we get them out of the plant, and then how we um, call that a slurry. So it's actually in your um, your hand out there. So what you would do is um, you would take all the pulp. Yeah. Compost, exactly. Biomass, exactly. They are absolutely excellent. Uh, they, they're really, they hold a lot of moisture, so you throw those around in your garden, you've got a little automatic water. Some organic, delicious food. Uh, I would close off one, irrigate it, fertilize it. Right. Rotate them and close them. Michael Pollan, Michael Pollan, author of On the Horse of My Life, Roping the Cows. Our next sections are solar energy. We have a group on animal care, and we have a group on canning and preserving. So, get a unit like this, which weighs less than a pound, fold it up, and you can just take this anywhere. And that's this is this is where we've ended up after today's technology. And this is where we get to a little more technical. The amount of water in that river is amper. It works good. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Like, you have uh, incubator chicks. You have to. You have to be the mom. You have to feed on every day and everything. But if you ha if you have a hen or a, a duck hen, hatch them and take care. It's you don't have to do anything. She does all everything. weeds from the front garden are taken back into here. All the torpedo grass, all the stuff we don't want to compost, the chickens then will scratch through it and eat whatever they want out of it. But getting it, getting it to my right place. For 10 minutes, boiling for 10 minutes. But well, once this jar gets here, it is no longer sterilized. I usually work on about 50 gallons per person per day. And that, that works out pretty close. I'm extreme questions on water. Our I next a, session. I have a reverse osmosis filtration mm -hmm. system in my house that came oh. with my house when I bought it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I've never used it because did, they didn't leave any instructions or anything. And <laughs> I would recommend changing out your filters, uh -huh. and uh, it, it should turn right on. Really? Yeah. Sheet that I did on the aloe vera, um, so see, yeah, so it treats digestive problems. So if you have an upset stom stomach, you can um, either drink it like this, or you can actually um, eat a little bit of it. Don't eat too much really really want to learn more about and, and we'll try to get a class together so that we can teach them. Cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's been great. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you so much.